That's me, Alex. Way up on top of there. Let me tell you how I wound up there. We don't grow rice in Oklahoma. So on our trip to Arkansas, we took the opportunity to learn about it by visiting a rice mill. First, let's talk about what rice is. Rice is a grain, the seed of a grass plant named Ariza sativa. Gazootite. No, that's the name of a plant that grows the seeds that we call rice. Rice is a staple food for many cultures and makes up more than 20% of the calories for the world's population. As the rice plant grows and matures, it produces a head, which is a cluster of seeds. When these seeds ripen, they are ready for harvest, which is done with a combine. From the field, the rice is dried and stored, but it's not ready to be used. First, it has to be milled. To understand milling, let's look closer at a grain of rice. The husk covers the outside and is about 20% of the weight. It is a protective layer that is fibrous and contains silica. Humans can't digest this part, so it has to be removed by the milling process. The next layer is the bran. It is 8% of the weight, and it's a brown or tan color. It contains oils, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and proteins. It is edible and left on for brown rice. To make white rice, more milling removes the bran layer and the rice germ. The germ is the part of the seed that can grow a new plant, and it contains oils, vitamins, and protein. It is 2% of the weight. When a grain of rice is milled down to polished white rice, all that's left is the endosperm, the large white interior of a rice grain. It contains starch, proteins, vitamins, and minerals, and is 70% of the weight of a whole rice grain. There's a lot of debate about the nutrition of white versus brown rice. We aren't experts, and we aren't going to get into that here. Maybe that'll be a future video. But we can say that brown rice is chewier, takes longer to cook, and has a nuttier flavor. White rice is softer, cooks faster, and has a more neutral flavor. I like them both, but there are a lot more than two kinds of rice. There are over 120,000 varieties. I probably like all of them, too. And rice is used in other foods besides serving it as a grain. There's rice oil, rice paper, rice flour, rice vinegar, rice milk, puffed rice, rice noodles, rice wine, and some beer is brewed using rice. Which brings us to the Anheuser-Busch Rice Mill in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Surrounded by some of the world's best rice production, they mill 2.6 million pounds of rice per day. Much of that rice gets shipped by rail car to its breweries across the United States. And some of what they produce is table rice, the term used for what gets served to consumers as white rice. Let's see how they mill rice and what the difference is between what goes to the brewery and what goes to your table. This is Scott Preston. He gave us a tour of their operations. Trucks bring in patty rice. That is what the rice is called when it comes from the field. Comprised almost entirely of whole rice grains, there is also some amount of extraneous matter, like small rocks or soybeans or other non-rice materials. Before a load of rice is accepted, samples are taken from the truck and analyzed in the lab. These samples are usually collected by this probe, which uses air to move it from the truck into the lab. But in some cases, it can be collected using this special trolley. Oh, that's how you get it? See how it goes down into wraps? One tire control, twist down the frame, flex it up in that box, off the big old back. It's getting some extra white that got trapped. Yeah. In the lab, this sample is analyzed for moisture and quality. This machine measures moisture. And the rest of this equipment allows them to mill the sample to quality test it. The equipment is a mini mill, allowing them to quickly process a sample, making sure it meets their standards so they know if they want to buy the load of rice. If the samples test well, the truck is accepted. The truck then goes to the unloading bay, where the hopper bottoms are open 
and the paddy rice falls down through these large grates into a pit. At the bottom of the pit, drag chains move the rice and it begins its journey into storage. The empty truck gets weighed again. The full weight minus the empty weight is how much rice was received and that is used to determine what the farmer gets paid for that load. Alright, so that's paddy rice. You can see all the dirt and everything that's in it. We gotta get that out. Now just, just get one of these. Pick up for us. Alright, got one? Alright, I ain't gonna fix it. Alright, I want you to, let me see your earplugs. This is good. Why you got to me? Well, these don't work, so I don't think okay. it matters either way. Alright, so I want you to feel of one end. It's going to feel like a needle. No, with, with your hand. There you go. You feel that? How sharp it is? Both ends aren't healing. Well, one end is sharper than the other. It's That's this this hus is very high in a material called amorphous, amorphous silica. But you feel that? Yeah, and so you're bad. It's okay. Okay. Alright. They're using rice hulls now, like they use pecans and walnut shells for abrasion. So these, once the husk is off and anything on this side, this will wear through AR plate steel in a matter of months. It's that silica makes it very abrasive. That's why we grind it up. The drag chains move the rice to the bucket elevator which raises it high into the air. Valves can be set to direct which silo the grain gets stored. That elevator moves grain, but we took a more conventional elevator to the top so I could get a look at the view. I bet you. <laughs> I, uh, I went enough to get in there. <laughs> he wouldn't put you in there. <laughs> but let's see. You know what? This sucker's being redone. I redid it. Oh, I'm, I'm just curious. Is that weight limit 500 pounds? You're way shy of that, buddy. I'm at two on the side. Okay. Yeah, we're good. 335 pounds. Here we go. So it's not so dark. Dingy. All right. Okay. Life is so water connected. All right. Sure, we'll go up. That's me, way up at the top. When these bins are completely full, it holds enough rice for two weeks' worth of mill operations, 28 million pounds of rice. This is where the rice is stored until it's turned to be milled. On the way to the mill, we had to take a quick detour to see the shuttle wagon. They use it to move train cars. Here in the mill, all of this equipment on the lower level is used to move rice around from machine to machine. The first set of machines are the shellers. Their job is to take the husk off the rice. It does this by squeezing the rice grain between two rollers or plates, one of which is spinning faster than the other. This creates friction, which pulls off the husk. Now, we get the light. We got brown rice. And with a little bit of patty still in it. Okay, so From the shellers, it goes to the patty tables. These machines sort out the grains which still have husk and the ones which have all the husk removed. The grains that still have husk get sent back to the shellers for another pass. Only the grains with all the husk removed go to the next step, the whiteners. The whiteners are the machines that remove the bran layer and the germ, and there are two stages of it. The rice that goes into the whiteners is brown rice, and it comes out white rice. Yeah, you're holding. It's kind of oily. Go 
that's kind of oily. See how I can form it? This is what makes brown rice brown. We're milling it off of it. It gets sucked off by a fan. We got a whole bin full of this stuff. This is very high in protein. Very high. That doesn't mean that the bran and germ are wasted. It still has value and can be used for other things. In this case, they sell it to be used in animal feed. There's the first pass. Let's compare it. So it's going to get it in, right? It's going to go. Then there, see how much wider this is? Let's go compare it to the brown rice. Because of friction. So you're rubbing that rice together to get the bran off of it. One pass to another. See the difference of the whiteness. So we're capturing that bran and this this is pretty close to what you put on your face. The next machines are the purlers that polish up the rice and sort out broken bits. That is ready to put on your table. Right there. That is some good rice. Now, when you're milling it, it breaks the cord a little bit. That's broken rice. So, this is what all of the rice fields don't want. We don't mind it. We're sending it to worry but then they're turning it to crisp. Well, they're breaking it down even smaller than that. You don't want these broken bits in a bag of table rice. Nutritionally, they are the same as unbroken rice, but they lack uniformity and cook differently, so you'd have inconsistent textures in your dish. But the rice going to the brewery is going to be ground up to a consistent smaller size anyway. So if they are running brewery rice, the brokens don't matter. This means they can run faster and more aggressively when milling brewery rice. When they are milling for table rice, they slow the process down for gentler milling that results in fewer broken grains. This versatility allows them to meet their brewery demands, but shift their production to table rice when the brewery needs are met. The milling process isn't quite over. Before the rice leaves the mill, it passes through this sorting machine with a high-speed vision system. Rice is metered through it so that cameras can scan each grain of rice as it falls. If the camera detects any foreign matter, defects, or color variation, it blasts a perfectly timed puff of air to knock it out of the stream and into a junk bin. I'm going to take a picture of one of these cubes of rice. See that? It just took a picture. And if there was a bad piece in there, this machine knows to kick it out. It's got 15 cameras, and it's got a bunch of air nozzles in there, and it's just going to shoot them out. Cleaned, milled, polished, and sorted, the rice goes to bins where it waits for shipping. In addition to shipping by rail, the milled rice can also be loaded onto trucks. Aided by computers and PLCs with custom software, the mill operator controls and monitors milling from this room. Potential problems show up as alarms and displays show key processing information. Anheuser-Busch is the largest end user of rice in the country. Annual numbers are on the order of 882 million pounds of rice, worth around $120 million. That's enough rice to fill 4,200 train cars. Put another way, that is 14 trillion grains of rice. No matter how you look at it, that's a lot of rice. Thanks for the tour, Mr. Preston. I had a great time learning about rice milling. And thank all of you for watching. See you on our next adventure.